We are coming to you from one market in San Francisco. Why? Because this is ground zero for innovation of all sorts, not just computing or healthcare technology. That's why I'm thrilled to bring on Gary Friedman, the visionary CEO of Restoration Hardware, RH, to find out how his company is disrupting not only his own industry, but his own company in a spectacular way. Mr. Friedman, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim, thanks for having me. Good to see you. Appreciate it. All right, Gary, let's get started. Uh, there isn't another retailer I know that has 120,000 square foot innovation and product leadership center. I mean, you're breaking the paradigm. Well, uh, look, we're in, we're in a day and age where the world is moving faster and, uh, you know, change has to be embraced. And the idea of creating a center that really supports uh, the ideation process from, from ideation to presentation allows us to move significantly faster than anyone in our industry. Is that why you're willing to actually literally blow up successful stores to be able to have much more successful stores? Um, yeah, they, you know, we, we say in our company you have, to, you have to remain curious and you have to remain critical. And so if you're curious in, in business, you're curious in life, you're learning every day. Uh, and if you're critical, you, you feel objective enough to, to look at your best work and say, how can we do it better? So it's, it, it's whether it's stores, whether it's product, whether it's the way we distribute our product, um, whether it's the way we think about the, the financial infrastructure of the company, everything is always somewhat under attack. Right. Now, you uh, talk about how it is not what you say about yourself. It's what people are saying about you in order to define your social media strategy. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Look, uh, uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, everybody has a Twitter account, an Instagram account, a Facebook page, uh, 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 you name it. And, um, you know, we, we look at it and we say we, we can have all those things. And it's I don't think it's necessarily bad to have them. But in today's world, it's about it's about what you do, and and if you if you do great work, um, people appreciate great work, and people then can acknowledge the great work. And so instead of banging pots and pans and trying to talk about ourselves and trying to tweet about ourselves or uh, trying to send out pictures of what we're doing, we try to do great things and let everybody else, you know, who, if people who believe what we believe will will respond to that. Okay, well, let's talk about that notion of you believe what we believe. You are the only guy, and of course, you do your conference call set to music. I happen to love it. I feel like it's calming and soothing. But you say at one point in your conference call, only purchase our stock if you are an investor. You do not want traders. I've never heard anyone ever say, don't buy our stock. But you don't want certain kinds of investors. Well, look, I, I think what, what we want to do is build a share, shareholder base that is uh, – investing with us for the long term because that's how we invest that's how we think we every investment we make uh, every initiative that we pursue we, we pursue with a long-term view and we try we're trying to build a, really a, a great enterprise enterprise that's a, a great durable business over time and, and it takes it takes time to build great companies it doesn't happen in quarters it doesn't happen in, in in weeks and it doesn't even happen in years it happens over a period of time I think that's really important because you take risks and, you know, a trader might say, you know what, this quarter I didn't like it, or it's a bridge year, and they'll bang it down. Someone who's along with you has create, has been part of a wealth creation machine that I have not seen in retail in ages. Um, well, that's that's true, and we, we're trying to build wealth over the long term. Um, if you look at, we, you know, we went public uh, a little over two years ago at $24 a share, and our stock's trading in the 90s, and, um, and throughout that, we've, I think we've, We've performed consistently, but there's been an inconsistency about it that I think is um, not normal in retail. Again, I, I like to talk about the fact that most people try to focus on companies that are that are about duplication. We're about innovation. And so when you innovate, things are going to change all the time. And that, um, that can mean there's going to be quarter to quarter swings in a business. But uh, over the long term, I think we're going to build an enterprise that will win. Well, I think you've earned that because this is the fifth consecutive year of 20 percent plus revenue growth. So there may be intra-week that things haven't gone well, but Correct. no years. No no years. And and even in quarters, we, we might have, on the top line, we might have missed the business right. now and then. But actually, from the bottom line point of view, from an earnings point of view, which we believe is the most critical metric, we have not missed our earnings guidance in any quarter as a public company. And yet at the same time, you describe yourself as a $1.9 billion startup, which is, means <laughs> here we are in San Francisco. You think it's very early on in the growth of this company. Oh, we're at the, the early, early innings. Look, we, we, we've said we can transform the company in North America to a 4 to $5 billion company over the next several years. And that's just in North America. And, and that's really being driven by our real estate transformation. Uh, and 
to date, we only have a handful of stores that we've transformed. So we're at the very beginning of that. And then when you think about the, the opportunity for this company internationally, and you think about the, the company beyond what, what I'd call a multi-channel platform, which we're building, or omni-channel, right. what everybody wants to call it, uh, you'll hear us talk in the near, very near future about what we call as a multi-dimensional ecosystem. And we, build, we believe we can build an ecosystem around everything we do, around taste and style and design, uh, that can be very far-reaching. Well, I think your disruption has created tremendous wealth for people, and I agree with you. I think it is very, on, very early on in this story. Gary Friedman, Restoration Hardware Chairman and CEO. Great stock, great company. Hey, you know what? I'm a big shopper there, too. Thank great. you so much. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.